Okay, so this is what I want you to do. I, in the comments, I need you to put, <laughs> I'm cracking myself up thinking about this. What? What am I? I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, wow, you know, honestly, you guys, I didn't think I was going to wake up and record and this video was going to go this way. I really didn't think this was going to go this way at all. Welcome back to my channel. It's Mr. Grain here, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing of The Witch's Moon for August 2020. Okay, so first things first, the box this month feels a little light. I'm not gonna lie to you, I like heavy feeling boxes because in my mind I equate heaviness with more toys, but um, we shall see. We shall see. Okay, so opening the box, this is what it looks like. And for this month, we've got see so you guys can see my oracle card which says the love within me is more powerful than doubt and fear these are cute i wonder what deck this is from but for this month we are working with fairy magic so during these bright days and dark nights we work to carefully connect with other worlds hoping to obtain wisdom and knowledge just beyond our physical sight Lay energies that are constantly at work, realms that are full of life and magical beings that are not bound to the same perceptions that we work with each day. As seekers, we are always aware of other forces pushing their own manifestations through our thick fog of reality. In this very special collection, we work with energies and magic of the fairy realm. We are also deeply connected to the beauty and raw authenticity of the fae and are so thrilled to finally provide these one-of-a-kind items for your practice so okay so we have a piece of artwork here the fey offering which is actually really beautiful and then we have two more big pieces of artwork here um the fairy king and the fairy queen so i guess i'll go over the fairy queen with you guys because ladies first uh, after Rome's decline, the thin threads of civilization rapidly frayed. The Christian church emerged as a unifying force providing stability in precarious times while dismantling any vestige of paganism. Through assimilation, popular pagan spirits were remodeled into saints. Other magical beings were either lost, demoted to localized lore, or altogether demonized. Unlike the fairy king who survives as a relatively developed character in medieval romances, the fairy queen only exists in fragments uh, ancient willful goddesses, legendary sovereign queens, temperamental elemental beings, personifications of fertility and destruction, etc. Today she is known as Titania? Titania? Or Mab? Popularized by William Shakespeare, yet her names are numerous. The Fairy Queen as a composite being is celebra celebrated today as a life-affirming advocate of creative expression, a staunch defender of personal liberation, and an ally to those who better themselves introspectively. And then the Fairy King... Unlike the mysterious fairy queen, the fairy king, or Oberon, is unique in that he has a name. His origin is roughly defined as, roughly defined, and he is presented as a relatively well-developed character. Likely derived from pre-Christian sources, Oberon has linguistic ties to the Germanic Alberic in Norse, the former translating as ruler of elves, the most detailed account of Alberon is found in the okay I'm not gonna be a lot of you I'm getting really bored so here's the thing guys before I go further I do not do fairy magic fairy is not my thing okay um I just don't resonate with them it's as simple as that so automatically what I'm seeing is that I will not like this box <laughs> I don't even like I have I've lost all interest not because I don't think that it's not beautifully curated because I think what's in here I like just looking at the artwork itself I mean there's so much time and effort that has gone into this and I so appreciate that but it's just not my thing 
everybody has their thing. This is just not one of mine. So what I'm thinking of doing, because even though I have like my own like Book of Ancestors, Book of Shadows or whatever, because I don't do fairy magic, um, these, these artwork pieces don't actually have much use for me. And so I don't want to hold on to them if somebody else could really utilize this information. And so what I'm already thinking that I may want to do is divide some of these things up in this box and do a giveaway for you guys. And um, I have to see what else is in this box, but depending on what's in here, maybe I'll give the whole box or I'll give bits and pieces to you guys. Um, Cause I just feel like there's going to be somebody out there that just is going to just get more out of this than I will. And I don't want to just hoard it. Um, right. So like even the herbs that we were given this month, right? There's rose petals, there's jasmine herbs, and there's blue cornflower herbs. All of these things are beautiful, but I have all of these already in my own personal collection. And so the idea of holding on to this just doesn't make much sense to me because what would I use it for? I already have a lot of them. Um, hmm. I think I may keep the rose, but I'm leaning towards giving the jasmine and the cornflower away to you guys because I have these already. Um, but let me read to you what they actually do, just in case you feel like you want one. Um, rose petals. Dried rose petals are always near when we are working through practices that involve love, luck, and attraction. Um, along with jasmine, blue cornflower, and many other herbs, rose can be used as an offering to fairies or included with energetic apothecary blends. Rose petals can also be scattered around the home to reduce stress, inviting energies of calm and collectedness into your aura or into your area. Also, by the way, guys, rose is really good for protection. People don't really know this, right? They think rose and they think love, but rose, because of the thorns, are actually really good to use if you want to do any kind of protection magic. Um, so the jasmine buds... Um, a wonderful attractor herb, jasmine brings the energies of love and good luck into your sacred space. Jasmine can be added to herbal incense blends and burned during divinatory practices such as tarot and scrying and is commonly burned during sleep to bring about prophetic dreams. And then blue cornflower is another wonderful herb to have in your herbal cabinet. Blue cornflower is commonly, is commonly used for psychic development and increasing effectiveness during divinatory practices, carrying the essence of magic within its energies. Blue cornflower is a wonderful herb to work with during your pursuit of spiritual knowledge. I wonder how the jasmine smells. Yeah, that's what I'm leaning towards. Mm, smells like dried flour. Um, hmm. I'm so not resonating with this box. Like, not even in the slightest. Like, the energies are just so not matching. They're just not there. Um, there is a stone in here. Let's see what this is. It's light. So it's some kind of, I do like this. What is this, amber? Ha <laughs> ha, rough amber. We are thrilled to be able to include a piece of rough amber within this collection. Amber is a fossilized resin that can be found in a variety of green, blue, and red hues. Amber is a wonderful transmutation stone turning negative en energies into positive energies. As amber is a resin, the attraction of nature, spirits, and fairies will be prominent. Amber is a true facilitator when working to become closer to all things that reside within earthly energies. Place the stone upon your altar to use as an offering in your fairy garden or spaces. I actually do like this stone. I've been wanting a piece of amber, just haven't gotten around to getting it. What I'm actually thinking about, I'm actually trying to figure out um, like what different things in this box can be used for. And maybe this is where this video will go, right? So sometimes it ha happens when people are doing magic, they, um, they lose their sense of creativity, right? Like you'll read an article and then the article will tell you basil only does one thing. And then you'll think that you can only use basil for that one particular thing. But magic is so versatile. It's so flexible, right? Because all energy is transmutable. You can make anything, anything, right? And so what I'm currently going through in my head is like, okay, I understand that I myself don't resonate with a theme. It's not that it's not a good theme. I just don't resonate with it, right? And so I'm currently in my head thinking about all the things that I do do magic-wise and what 
I can use some of these tools in here for. So for example, with rose petals, I use rose petals in nearly every magic thing that I do. Obviously for love, but I also use it for protection too. And then just like how it says in here, every once in a while, I'll put it in for money stuff if I'm looking for like luck or anything like that. So rose petals is something that I'll keep because I run out of dry rose, rose petals all the time. I know that I'll use a lot of that. The amber, I'm going to keep this too because I've, I've been wanting a piece. But I'm thinking about this jasmine and then this oracle card I'll keep because obviously it was meant for me. So this, But this jasmine I'm thinking about doing a giveaway for. This blue cornflower I'm thinking about doing a giveaway for. And then um, all of this artwork because I won't use any of it. I just won't use it. I know I won't use it. I know I won't look at it. I know I won't reflect on it. There are some people who really resonate with fairy magic. All of their stuff is fairy. I'm just not one. Um, there's also, what is this? A wreath? Hold on. So we've got a wreath here with some moss and stuff. Um, what is this? Let's see. Oh, it's a grapevine. Ooh, see, I like this idea of a grapevine. I may transmute this. I haven't even read it. But grapes, if anyone has watched the Learn Tarot series, are a spiritual symbol of abundance. And so even though I may not resonate with the idea of using it for fairy magic, I may keep this wreath and just hang it up as a symbol of abundance inside the household. Hmm? Made from grapevines and moss, this beautiful handmade fairy nest was created to accompany your fairy statue. Oh, there's a statue. Well, I guess there is. Uh, simply stand your statue within the center of this nest and placing on your altar or sacred space. Offerings and gifts can also be placed within this nest, such as a variety of herbs and flowers, as well as stones, trinkets, coins, and shells. Although you may not find these items are physically taken, these spirits can take the essence of these items with them as an offering. It is important that you frequently replace offerings. This is actually really helpful, right? Okay, so offerings in general, like how do they work, right? So some people, they understand the idea of leaving things out as an offering, but what oftentimes gets confusing is not knowing when to replace them, not knowing if it was received, right? Because you'll come back the next day and everything looks exactly the way you left it. It's a really good point that the Witch's Moon made in the sense of, okay, they may not take it physically, that you can see from this particular plane or dimension, but the energies of the offering are always accepted, right? So what you're doing as an offering, you're providing the energies from this particular realm, from this particular dimension, right? How they receive the energies in their dimension is, a, is really their business, but that's what, it's an energetic exchange more than it is of a physical exchange. So I'm actually really glad that they, that they, that they pointed that out. That is a really important um, point to make. So, but they did say statue, so I might as well go for that one. So here is the statue. I mean, it's pretty, it's cute. Like, I, I mean, it's nice. Like they, they are nice things, you know? I, you guys, I just, I just don't resonate with any of this. I just don't resonate. Like even looking at the statue, I'm like, I, what am I, I don't, I don't, it's just not my thing. Uh, let's see. Statue with removable wings. What? Where's the wings? Oh! Oh! I mean, this is cute! Like, this is so cute! Statue with... I don't yet know how this works, though. Um... Hmm, is it, is that right? Is it wrong? Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's not wrong. Um, you know what? Okay, I'm going to give this away. <laughs> Whoever gets this, it's with much love. I trust that you guys will figure it out. I don't really have the patience. Um, <laughs> Fairy Realm is a vast existence full of various types of traditions known for different magical attributes and personalities. Specific to fairies and fae, you may find brownies, pixies, gnomes, murloc, and many other elemental spirits. Among the countless stories and ideas regarding fairy, there can be newfound beauty resting below the surface. Although you may hear warnings regarding the use of fairy magic, we view these truly authentic uh, spirits as crucial members of our magical family. 
I'm actually glad this came up because so the reason why I personally don't do fairy magic is because I don't understand it. I don't understand fairy magic. And that is also a reason why you will never see me teaching on the channel. And if you do see me teach it on this channel, it'll be way down the line after I've understood it and I have practiced it for a period of time, right? Because I don't like to speak about things that I don't fully understand. I don't actually understand fairy magic. It's not that I think that fairy magic is bad. I just don't get it. And what I, but the problem with not understanding something is that there are a lot of warnings that come with working with fairies in terms of like that they are easy to anger. And because I don't understand them and I'm not really trying to piss anyone or anything off, it's just not my cup of tea, right? But some of you guys like fairies. You've always resonated with fairies. I know some of you guys build little fairy homes and everything like that for your fae. For your fae. Um, a lot of you guys have fairy themed tarot decks and it's your thing. It's just not my thing because of those reasons. And so, which is why I won't be using any of this box. However, um, I also think it makes no sense for me to keep it for myself, knowing that I won't actually use it, knowing that I don't resonate with it. So I will be giving this stuff of, uh, stuff away. And because I did really like the idea, the idea of transforming this wreath because it's a grapevine, I was in my head, right? I was going to pick this off, pick the moss off, um, mostly because I don't like live plants in my home because it attracts like fruit flies and stuff like that. And I don't, I just don't like that. But I was going to pick the moss off and then just keep the vine itself because I think it's so cool. However, seeing now that the wreath and these two are supposed to go together, I'm going to, I'm going to leave them together. So whoever gets this will get these things together along with their D detachable wings and because it's a box that seems like so much of this stuff is interconnected I was thinking about maybe doing a few different giveaways like maybe someone get herbs or something like that I'm leaning towards just giving away the whole box um except for the stone I'm keeping that I paid for the box I'm keeping the stone but in the rose petals because I paid for that too but anything that I don't want or like i'll give it to you guys whoever is the lucky winner will get one box with the rest of this stuff over here okay so we also have and then you'll also get this as well so you know what you're doing um let's see so we have an oil here and most and you'll get this too like everything else in this box that i can see that's in here you'll you'll get because it all they all go together and I don't want to actually break it up. So at this point, this has turned into to, from an unboxing to a, a giveaway. <laughs> um, <laughs> you Wow. You know, honestly, you guys, I didn't think I was going to wake up and record and this video was going to go this way. I really didn't think this was going to go this way at all. Fairy Guardian is this oil. Um... We have created this magical anointing oil with the intention of bringing bright protective energies into your aura and sacred space. This is a wonderful oil to anoint specific magical tools with as well, such as statues, coins, talisman, etc. Under, along with other guardian blends, this very specific, special anointing oil brings with it a sense of calm and collectedness brightening the spirit we have enchanted this magical oil with amber jasmine lavender and chamomile oils and have included rose and blue cornflower as well mm. aside your oil you will find a lemurian quartz set to personify oneness with your aura so i mean it smells really nice it smells really good so whoever gets this you will be very happy then we've got a bath, sacred salt, the other world. Inside of it looks like there is lavender, rose, mm, is that lemongrass? Let me see. Ooh, this smells really nice. Um, we have created the sacred salt with the intention of allowing you to connect with other worlds, such as realms that sit outside of your reach. As you sit with this natural energy, practice breath working rituals that may allow you to heighten your consciousness. While you are free of anxiety, negative self-talk, or worry, allow yourself to explore the ideas and concepts you wish to connect with. Open your mind to receive signs that just from signs from just beyond the veil. Ooh, this is really cool. I like this. 
especially for people that are like particularly interested in the idea of other dimensions or ac accessing higher realms like where spirit guides tend to sit angelic beings tend to sit or just even multi interdimensional beings i think that could be really helpful then we have some incense these are amber just want to give them a quick smell we have placed amber ritual incense with incense incense sticks within this collection for you to burn your altars or to incorporate within your ritual. Amber is one of our favorite scents and is a more common fragrance that most are attracted to. Used for love, comfort, healing, jo and joy, amber is a wonderful addition to your magical workings. Oh, I can. I don't even have to open a thing. Yeah, that smells nice. You will like this, whoever you are. And then last but not least, we've got some candles. Um, twin candles. We have hand rolled and charged these candles with the purpose of acting as an offering to the fairies. We would recommend placing these on a small plate and including other offerings around them. These candles can be burned together or one at a time. We also recommend being comfortable within your space so that you may speak words clearly out loud. So they are not, I don't want to tear the paper since I'm going to be putting it back to the box for the giveaway. I kind of want to make sure it's neat, but they are two uh, candles they're kind of like this sort of deep burgundy color and they are dressed they are dressed with um rose petals and there's some yeah there's a bit of an oil smell in here i mean they are nice i just don't want to unwrap them because i mean i can't put the paper back but you can see that i've already kind of made a mess with the dressing here i don't know if you can see that probably not but um of rose petals so here this is what we're gonna do i don't like this box i don't like it um, I think that it's beautifully curated. The Witch's Moon always does a phenomenal job. I don't like the box because I'm just not into fairy magic. I will get zero use out of this box. So while thinking, this is what I'm going to do. I use a lot of rose petals and I want to keep them. However, I think whoever gets this box will have more use for it because these herbs were put in this box to be used as offerings for fairy magic. And so I think that it would be best for whoever to get this box to have everything in there, right? I was thinking about what to do with this oracle card because there is an oracle card that's pulled for every box. And the idea is that it is the recipient's reading. Um, because I know I don't resonate with this box and because I know, I, I knew immediately when I opened it that I was gonna give it away. There's something in my spirit that's telling me that this is not meant for me. So I'm gonna put that back. I'm gonna keep this. <laughs> this is the one thing in this box that I actually really liked. I have been wanting a piece of amber for a really hard time and if any, for a long time. And the thing is for anyone that, that, that works with crystals, to get a chunk of amber like this, um, you can't just walk into a metaphysical store and walk out with a chunk of amber like this. I don't even know how long it's going to take me to find another piece like this. So I'm going to keep the amber and I don't feel bad. About, I feel a little bit bad about it. I feel a little bit bad about it. But at the same time, I did pay for this box. I literally paid for a whole box that I'm just going to give away to somebody. Um, I'm going to keep this. All right. I'm keeping this. But... Whoever gets this box will get everything else that you saw me go through. So you will get this, you will get all of the artwork, the statue, and everything else that comes with the box. I'm just going to wrap it back up, and I'm going to repackage it back up, and I'm going to send it out. So how do you participate in this giveaway? Honestly, I don't have the slightest idea because I didn't plan to give it away until I, I literally just opened it. So what, what do people do for giveaways? <laughs> Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We have steps. I may need to write these, I don't have anything to write these steps down. Okay, I'll, rem I'll, I'll, I'll re listen to the video to remember what I said. Okay, so this is what I want you to do. I, in the comments, I need you to put, <laughs> I'm cracking myself up thinking about this. But, um, um, Mystic and I love you. Love you too. Like, and share, and subscribe. And you guys, I can actually see all of this. <laughs> I can see all of this, okay? Um, um, analytics is really amazing when you get on the back end of YouTube. So I'll know if you did that. I will know if you said, Mr. Crane, I love you. Mr. Crane, I love you. 
will trigger it, right? If I see that in the comments, then I'll go check everything else and make sure you did everything else. So put Mr. Green, I love you in the comments, like this video, share this video, although I have share it if you want. No, share this video in the name of continuity and subscribe to this channel, okay? So Mr. Green in the comments, Put that in the comments. That triggers it to let me know that you are interested in participating, okay? Like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel. I will see all of this. I will check it on the back end, okay? So the, the giveaway will end two weeks from this video going up. So all of this information, by the way, will be in the, in the description below um, at upload, so you'll know what the instructions are. It'll cost 14 days from upload of this video, and, um, and then I will randomly select who wins by putting you in a generator so it's fair okay so what are we doing again comment mr crane i love you in the comments i love you too it'll trigger it i'll be able to see that that's what you want from me okay like share subscribe to this channel and i will enter you for the giveaway that will close in two weeks from the record uh, for the posting of this video from the posting of this video and everybody that entered will go into a random generator and then whoever it spits out will get this box and I will contact you and I will ship this, this, this box to you personally, if you are interested. Okay. So this is really interesting. I did not expect this video to go this way at all. This is like, yeah. I mean, if that was, I mean, that's probably the most authentic response that you could get to something. Um, but, and I'll see you guys soon.